I want to give an overview of gene expression. Um, this means going from DNA ultimately to protein. RNA is the intermediate expression of genes, which are part of the DNA. And I want to do this because it's an example of structure function. Um, and it's also going to be the basis of how we um, get our proteins and how our cells become specialized to have different functions despite having genetic identical, um, identical, identical DNA. So this should be mostly review um, and you don't need to know some of the details I'm gonna say, I'll try to keep it in a big picture. Um, but in humans, we have 23 pairs, 46 chromosomes, and this is packaged up DNA. So here's one chromosome and the chromosome is inside the nucleus, inside of our cell. And a chromosome is packaged up DNA. So here's our DNA. DNA contains um, genes, segments of nucleotides that provide our genetic information. Nucleotides are polymers of nucleic acids. Um, the components of a nucleic acid is shown here. This is the base, which is either an A, T, C, or a G. And the code in our DNA strands provides the information to make RNA and then proteins from that. Bas basic central dogma. So that's also what's shown here. Um, it's a genetic code because this ATCGs are a code. This is also showing central dogma, which is the idea of going from DNA to RNA to a polypeptide, which folds into a protein. Um, so this is the DNA sequence. This might be a section of it could be a gene that codes for something um, like this right here, this little section. You don't need to remember the details or um, really anything about transcription or translation, which are the processes to go from DNA to RNA, RNA to protein. Um, but knowing that this code codes for amino acids, which then make up proteins. This polypeptide is going to fold into a protein. And that's what's shown in this image here. So protein structure in this picture. Here's our chain of amino acids. This is called primary structure of a protein. Primary meaning the, like the first. Um, these individual amino acids are determined by three nucleotides each from our DNA. So right, a DNA coded for these amino acids. These amino acids fold. Um, this chain is also called a polypeptide many peptides. This folds into the secondary structures, which then fold into both tertiary and quaternary. Some proteins are functional in tertiary structure. That's their final structure. They're, they're good to go. They can do their thing. Some form multiple units together to form quaternary structure. Um, hemoglobin is one example that actually takes four subunits, just happens to be four, which is also quaternary. Um, to have a functional hemoglobin protein that can carry oxygen throughout the bloodstream. So this is the idea of how we get protein structure is from the interactions between those amino acids. They all have a chemical composition and fold together in a certain way to make a functional protein um, structure function relationship. If we have a mutation in the DNA, that's gonna change the protein that's made often. So mutations can be silent, meaning they don't have an effect, and there's various reasons for this. Um, but sickle cell anemia is an example where a single um, mutation results in a different phenotype, so a different expression. It actually takes two mutant genes to have detrimental effects. Um, but first let's go through the basics. So if you have a single base mutation, so the A is changed to a T, that's gonna result in a different amino acid. It says protein here, but this single one is an amino acid. Glutamate, um, glutamate is now valine. Um, 
And those have different chemical properties. So when they come together to form the protein, it's going to form differently. Normally, hemoglobin for, is these four subunits that come together in this nice little um, singular, single sets of four. In this mutant, these are clumped together. So they form this clump structure because of the difference in that amino acid. That's going to result in clumped cells. So here's the cells. They form a different shape, these sickles, um, because of that clumped protein inside. So structure of the cell is dependent on the structure of the protein, which is dependent on the structure ultimately of the DNA being one base different. Now, it is pretty cool. Um, you actually need two copies of this mutant gene for this to be really detrimental. If you have one copy, it's actually somewhat beneficial because you're resistant to malaria. So um, sickle cell anemia is typically problematic for carrying sufficient oxygen when you have two, co two copies of the, that mutation. Okay, so the other thing about protein is that proteins um, is they're really diverse, right? So there are hundreds of different proteins and they're different in each cell. So first of all, there's two kind of broad types of proteins that kind of categorize two types of diversity. One is fibrous. These are structural proteins. They're long and fiber-like. And another type are globular. These are very diverse. They're all globs. So some sort of folded up, like the like hemoglobin is a glob, right? But they're very diverse. Uh, let's see some examples of each of these. So keratin and collagen are both examples of fibrous proteins. Um, myofilaments would be another one. The rest of these are all examples of globular, various shapes. And these are going to have a ton of different functions. So you could have proteins that are enzymes, right? They carry out metabolic reactions. You could have um, proteins that are antibodies. So recognizing and responding to foreign particles. Transport is a huge one. Um, transport is transporting oxygen, carbon dioxide, or transporting things in and out of the cell. So some membrane proteins are um, involved in transport. Communication is a big job of proteins. So this membrane protein, we don't know what it's doing here, um, but it, it could possibly be a um, communication, either a receptor, or it actually looks like it does have a little signal here that's um, communicating with other cells that it is what tag it has on it. So it might be this, like a like um, carbohydrate group provides information about whether the cell belongs to the, its own body or someone else, for example. Um, but tons of different types of proteins. The proteins in a cell determine the function of that cell, right? Um, really, so those levels of organization as well as structure function. So I like this image, this idea of a differential gene expression. Different cells in our body have the identical DNA, but make different proteins. This allows our cells to become specialized. A cool characteristic of multicellular organisms. Um, so all of our cells originated from a single cell, a fertilized um, embryo that became a zygote. And if we took cells from any of these tissues, the cells would be genetically identical with a few exceptions. However, you can see the amazing with different phenotypes. So red blood cells make very different proteins than smooth muscle cells. Smooth muscle cells are gonna have a lot more fibrous and motor contractile proteins, a lot of mitochondria and proteins involved in ATP synthesis compared to red blood cells, um, compared to fat cells, which are gonna be filled with a lot of fat tissue, lipids, and a small nucleus, and not have a whole lot of structural um, motor proteins or um, anything. All of these protein, these cell types have specific proteins to them. And this is the idea of differential gene expression. Um, this occurred during development. So a developmental biology could, could talk a whole lot more about the process that goes into 
this differentiation from a single zygote to all the specific tissue types, ultimately. Right, another learning check here. 